Hey, Jason and Laura, welcome back to the Travel Tips segment of the Travel Path Podcast. Yes, thank you for having us back. <laughs> nice to talk again. Yes, if you guys haven't heard, we had episode 13, Jason, Laura, and their daughter, Alexis, came on the show talking about their 75-day road trip they took with the three of them and their dog, Polly. Um, they talked about everything from the frustrations, some of the hurdles and obstacles traveling with children. So if you're looking to get into an extended road trip with kids, definitely check that one out. Today, travel tips, we're talking about one destination they know best. So Laura and Jason, what are we talking about today? The Florida Keys. <laughs> Awesome. I'm particularly excited about this because that is very high on my list where we're going to end up for a little while at some point this year. But tell us why this is such a important, special place for you guys. I think just it's very versatile. I feel like there's just there's a lot out there and there's a lot of availability. And um, it's just it's a great it's a fun place. You feel like you're on vacation. It's one of those places you go and you're like, OK, I'm on vacation and you can drive there. And you can drive there. It's accessible, I would say. And uh, you you feel like you are far, far away from anything normal. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, obviously, this is a great vacation destination. If you want warm weather, this is exactly where you should go. But what would you say for someone who wants what type of experience? Who should go to the Florida Keys? Well, and that's great because like it's be there's beach. There's yeah. a lot of water sports, but there's tons of like history there as yes. well. That's super interesting. And even if people are, you know, it's not our thing, but people just like to go bar hopping. I mean, you can't beat Duval Street and Key West. <laughs> or fishing. A lot of people and go fishing. Fishing is huge. Um, but again, as she's mentioned the history, the beaches. Well, there's not a ton of beaches actually in the Keys. People might think, oh, there's beaches. I mean, there's not a ton of beaches. We'll mention, we can mention some few of those mm -hmm. that we like. And, uh, but again, there's, there's a lot to offer for a lot of different types of people there. And a very laid back vibe. I think that's the biggest thing is you really do feel like you're on vacation when you go. I mean, just it is very laid back. It's not for somebody who wants to climb mountains or anything right. like that. There's not a lot of intense sports to do probably, but um, I guess snorkeling, you know, that, that can work up a good, <laughs> a good workout. But yeah, it's definitely like that laid back. I want to be on vacation vibe. Perfect. And sometimes you need that, especially if, you know, for us who are doing these extended road trips and, you know, are climbing, like you said, climbing mountains and just constantly on trails. Sometimes it's nice to get that vacation in where you can actually just wind down, reset, relax, get your vitamin D and fuel you a little bit more for those longer trips that we're going to take later. To get that full Key West experience, how long do you think someone should plan to take their trip there? I know for us, like we say, we want to have at least five days there. But you can actually do a day trip, go down to Key West and come back. You can spend months there. It's like it's very versatile with timing is that, you know, there's tons of stuff to do down there. Or if you really are like, I only have one day or I only have one evening or two days, still do it. Yeah, it's uh, just so people realize from mainland Florida to Key West, depending on traffic, you're looking between two and three hour drive. Mm hmm. Yeah, which really isn't that bad, especially if you just want to be able to go down and experience it for a day or a night and then, you know, head back right. into, like you said, the mainland. I'm sure we'll talk about it later on, but that two or three hour drive is probably worth it just for the key lamp pie alone, right? It is. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah. The type of driving that you're going to do there is not like anything else that right. you can do either. So it's it's worth it just to make the drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. What would you say is the best time of year to visit? Or what time of year do you guys like to go? So I will say we have two opinions. So this is this will be interesting. So I love to snorkel and be in the water, but I found that going in the winter for me, I don't like being cold. The water was so cold I couldn't even breathe in my snorkel mask properly because I kept getting salt water. Let's let's get this straight though. It's okay. it's it's maybe cold by Florida standards. It's not <laughs> okay. cold by Lake Michigan standards <laughs> or anything in, in, in the Northeast. 70 degrees. It's 70 degrees is what the it, temperature but is. But it's probably a little bit cooler in the winter time than you would, might think that it is. Right. So the water itself is 70 degrees on average um, in the winter time. And for me, that's just too cold to, I just, I was shivering so much. So um, I know I've only been in the summer, the fall and the winter. I haven't been in the spring, um, but I actually really liked the fall, even though it's hurricane season. So I know... <laughs> You do need to watch the weather, but for me, the temperature was just perfect. It was, pr it was about 90 degrees. The water felt wonderful. And because I love being in the water and Alexis agrees, we both really liked the fall, even though I missed the fall colors, you know, that we have in New England and Michigan, we have beautiful fall colors, but I really liked going that time of year because of the temperature. The summer's very, very hot. 
And I haven't been to spring, so it could be that actually spring's the best time to go. And we just don't know because we haven't been there in the spring. So we were actually just there a few weeks ago. And it was high 70s, low 80s. To me, I don't think you can get more perfect than that. Right. So if you're just going and not going in the water, winter is probably the best time to go because, the, yeah, it's perfect temperature. And that's a few weeks ago, just for context, recording this right now, end of January, mid-January. So that's... Yeah, beginning of January, yeah. Yeah, we were in Florida right around the same time you were, and I, you couldn't have paid me to go snorkeling in that water. I touched it, and I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> way too cold. I was like walking way away from it. Yeah, and well, I made myself go in the waters. So I'm like, I know, I'm like, we're here in the Florida Keys, and like, I need to get in the water, but I was like, okay, I'm in the water. <laughs> there are a couple people with wetsuits, but yeah. not many. Yeah, most people just wear their swimsuits, yeah. <laughs> You mentioned that drive to the Florida Keys was a drive you can't get anywhere else. What did you mean by that? Well, especially the Seven Mile Bridge. That is a very unique drive. You're literally driving over the ocean. The views are awesome, especially if you're driving near sunset. But I will say up in between Key Largo and Marathon, you may not really feel like you're in the Keys. You really have to get south of Marathon, Marathon to Key West, where you really are going from one little island to the next little island, going over all these different bridges. Um, I think there's over 100 different bridges in the Keys that you drive over. You get more of a water view more frequently south of Marathon. Okay. Oh, that's a good point. Now, you obviously are traveling with your daughter and your dog most of the time. So is that completely accessible? I know you said she likes to go snorkeling with you, but... How does it go with the dog and her when you're down there? Oh, yeah, it's actually great. There's Key West itself is super really dog, dog friendly. friendly yeah. Tons of restaurants um, are dog friendly. And even the stores, at first we were having somebody wait outside with the dogs while the other two pen went into the shops. And I started noticing, I don't see any signs saying no pets allowed on many of the stores. And so we started taking the dogs in and everyone, the people that worked there were like, oh, they're so cute. So even the stores, like, so most places you can take your dog in Key West. Uh, Key West kind of anything goes anyway. Yeah. But, Key, again, uh, it's that laid back vibe where you're just like, you know, yeah, even the mannequins, Alexis noticed the mannequins in the store. She was, mom, their hair is really messed up. I'm like, it's because anything goes in Key West. It doesn't matter if the mannequin has crazy hair. <laughs> That's nice. That very relaxed vibe. So transitioning a little bit to, um, you guys are going to Key West, you're probably bringing your Airstream, right? Yeah. Have you ever flown from home to Florida? No. We, and we actually recently just looked into it because our, our, we're coming up on our 20th anniversary, which is the Emerald anniversary. So we wanted to kind of do something with Emerald Waters. And we were looking into flying directly to Key West. And from you know, in January, from Michigan to Key West is about 700 a person. So you can fly to Key West, you can fly into Marathon. Um, but Marathon's even more expensive than Key West. So what a lot of people would do is fly into Miami, which is pretty low cost to do, and then drive to the Keys. But Key West does have, a, I think, a pretty large airport by mm -hmm. you know island standards. Um, there's quite a bit of traffic in and out. So um, if you have the budget for it, you can fly directly there. Mm -hmm. Just not in our budget. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we want to save the uh, funds for those uh, excursions and experiences, yeah. right? Now, when you fly into Miami, how far is that drive? You're probably looking around three hours because you just never know what kind of traffic you're going to get, um, even from Miami, uh, even, you know, Highway 1 going down through the Keys. You never know what you're going to get because it's, it's one way in and one way out. Uh, we haven't experienced any horrible traffic there, but I know people have. Right. Well, it sounds like whatever your budget is, however you want to have your transportation, there's a lot of different options. Yeah, you can even take a boat. We've never done this, but the Key West Express, the Key West Express leaves from Fort Myers, and I think it's a catamaran that takes you directly to Key West. Well, that's arriving in style. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it was pretty low cost from what I remember. It wasn't a horrible price. Yeah, it was a reasonable cost for you know getting you down to Key West. Now, obviously, in Key West, there's going to be a ton of different boutique hotels and, you know, cottage right. options. When you guys bring your camper, what are some of your favorite campgrounds? Well, we love state parks yeah. just in general across America and in the Florida Keys, especially because they're pretty pricey. Um, any, you know, and unless you're in a state park. So Bahia Honda is Bahia our Honda. very favorite place to stay. They have about 40 campsites total. So it's a small campground and maybe... 15 of them are waterfront. So those were are very, very nice, obviously. And we were lucky enough to get a couple of those uh, a couple of times ago. Uh, they have cabins there that you can rent. Yeah, they do have cabins. And tent camping. But if, you know, I want to make it known that anywhere other than the state parks 
in anywhere in the Florida Keys, you're two hundred dollars a night for a campsite or more usually, mm-hmm. if if you can find anything. Wow. Now I have heard that um, from some fellow campers that we've come across. They said it's very hard to get into those campgrounds. That you have to be way ahead of time with booking. So how how have you guys experienced that? How far advanced are you looking for your for your campsites? It's it is it's it's for the like I said it's pretty stressful. Because honestly, I would get on at eight o'clock the day of that they would open up. I did that for a whole month. Did not get any Florida Keys sites, and I would look at um, Bahia Honda, um, Curry, Hammock. Curry Hammock, and John Penny Camp. There's three different state parks. I would look at all three of them. I'd start always with Bahia Honda. I couldn't do it. It was like over a month I tried. So he, again, he just keeps looking for cancellations. And that's how we got, we were able to get four nights at Bahia Honda and two at John Penny Camp. So you really just have to keep on the cancellations because it's very hard to get into. People are always canceling. I don't care what the campground is. Even small campgrounds, like I said, are only 40 sites at Bahia Honda. People are always changing their plans. Mm -hmm. And you will find a cancellation if you can, if you stay at it. And even if you can get there for, you know, two nights, the staff there, like the rangers, are very, they're very easy to work with. Like you just let them know, hey, we'd like to be here a little longer and just go into the ranger station every morning and check in with them if you only have two nights. Say, hey, were there any cancellations? And we even, um, the one time we had one site for five nights, but we really wanted a waterfront site because it was just, it's so nice. And we said, for us, it's worthwhile to move there for one night and go back to our site. And they were actually able to find yeah. us a cancellation for a waterfront site. We moved over there for the one night and we went back to our other site. Because the, the waterfront sites are just... They're amazing. Oh, like one of the best. You, sure. you, when you have that waterfront site, you you really don't want to go anywhere. You just right. stay there. It's, and about the Honda, the other nice thing about that state park is you have, like, I love sunrise. I love sunset. And you have a sunrise beach and a sunset beach. So in the mornings, we would wake up. We'd go see sunrise. You could do the walk around. And then, again, the walks, the beaches are not dog-friendly on Bahia Honda, but you can still walk the whole little island there with your dog so we would do our morning dog walk and um and loop around and yeah the, to me bahia honda is the best place to camp so when you guys go just keep keep trying to get bahia honda yeah <laughs> it's worth it <laughs> and in terms of booking those campsites are you using websites those campground websites or is there another website you're using for booking no just the florida state parks website mm-hmm. and we'll put links below in the show notes for all the resources talked about in today's show now Obviously, you know, it's Key West, so there's tons of restaurants. There's a lot of bars, like you've mentioned, where you can hop in and out. I'm sure it has a very lively nightlife for um, the bachelorette parties, things like that. But as far as families. It's at times maybe not kid-friendly. Right, because it was during, when we were there for around Halloween. I can't remember what the fest is called, but there's some sort of fan fest during Halloween where when you drive down Duval Street, people are not very close. And Duval <laughs> Street is really the street that if you're worried about what your kids might see, just don't go down Duval Street. A- anywhere else is going to be normally okay. So we turned down to Duval Street, and I didn't want to make a big reaction because then kids were going to want to see everything. So I'm like, oh, hey, Alexis, did you want to watch a show? <laughs> She's like, yeah. So we just gave her the iPad, the headphones, and we just <laughs> – she, she saw nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a good travel tip. So as far as that, is there anything else that maybe if you are a family traveling with, you know, small children that you should kind of avoid in the Key West area? It's more just if there's a festival going yeah. on. Yeah. Because like we walked well, down yeah. Duval Street just this last time and it was just during, during the day, it's okay. You might see some things that you may not want your kids looking at in some of the windows, but you might take the opportunity to distract them, like Laura mentioned. Right. When you see um, something just, oh, look at over here, there's a chicken. Because there's something. Yeah, chickens the chickens are, are walking all over the place. So there's always a way to distract them from seeing something you may not want them to see. But <laughs> during the day, because everybody, I think, is sleeping still, it's this is a wholly different vibe walking down the, the Wall Street. But when the sun goes down, it changes. Yeah. But that, again, that's just the Wall Street. <laughs> right. So the rest of the Key West is still very, very kid-friendly for sure. And like I said, extremely dog-friendly yeah. for sure. Awesome. So what do you guys like to do at night when that sun goes down? We're not really night lifers, I'll admit. We love to go see sunset and then... But the one night we were out a little bit later, we went to Robbie's um, to feed the tarpon. And that was pretty fun, too. And then, again, I, I'd read mixed reviews of dogs were allowed or not. Um, but we brought our dogs and they let us go out on the decks to feed the tarpon. But the pelicans were just, they were really aggressive. Very bold. It was hard to feed the tarpon, you know. And Alexis is trying to, like, you know, 
shoo the pelicans away and they're biting at her feet and everything. Polly wouldn't even bark at them. No, Polly was hiding behind us. We're like, Polly, do your job. Bark at them. But well, one thing I would say about nightlife, and it never gets talked about in the Keys, at least not that I've heard is they have a, a beautiful oh, night stars. sky. There. Yeah, the stars. There. So if you're into, you know, you know, nighttime photography or just stargazing, especially at Bahia Honda, it, it was beautiful. pretty nice, pretty nice night sky. So honestly, like if you camp at Bahia Honda, you can really just stay there for yeah. your whole time because there's just, there's so much even just right there. Like if you really just want to take a really laid back, you know, vacation to the Keys, I mean, yeah, no. Bahia Honda is where it's at. Well, they have the snorkel tour there. So mm -hmm. you can, you have an excursion you can take right from the state park. Their, their dive shop has a small restaurant in there. They even sell key lime pie from yeah. there. <laughs> um, so literally, yeah, you, you, you have two or three different beaches there you can check out. There's kayak rentals there. So like Laura says, there's a lot of opportunity just to stay put if you'd like to, and that mm -hmm. can help save money as well. Right. But I wouldn't recommend that. You, you got to at least go down to Key West. And you had mentioned there weren't a ton of beaches and going back to talking about the pet friendly activities and we're both frequenters of Honeymoon Island in Dunedin, which is a dog beach. Are there any dog friendly beaches in the Keys? Yeah, so in like, I think it was the Marathon area, there's Sombrero Beach, which is a really pretty- That's a nice beach actually. It's small, but there's really pretty palm trees on the beach. And yeah, that's completely dog friendly. The dogs can go in the water. There's a few others that we didn't go to. There's one called Anne's Beach that's right off of the road that looked kind of in, like a neat spot. Dogs are allowed there. Um, but one of our favorite beaches that dogs are kind of allowed at is the Fort Zachary Taylor State Park, which is at the you know tip of the Florida that's in, Key West. in Key West there. Dogs aren't allowed on the sandy part of the beach or in the water, but there's just this beautifully shaded palm tree beach area that the dogs are allowed. So like since Jason doesn't really want to be in the water anyway, he would hang out with Polly in that beautiful beach area, shaded, and Alexis and I would go in the water. And you're really on the beach. You were you are. I mean, you're you're sitting there, you're looking at, you know, all the beautiful views that, that the beach offers, and you're still sitting in sand, but you may have a nice palm tree over the top of your head keeping you out of the sun. Right. So yeah. So it's and, and to us, we feel like that was one of the most beautiful beaches we've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, that's one of the nicest beaches out there, I think. And it's nice too. And then if you don't have your dog with you, then um, the Fort Zachary Taylor is a very cool tour to take. You can tour the whole fort and there's just all these really cool little nooks and crannies. I and mean, you could spend a couple hours over there just touring the fort. They have historical reenactments sometimes. So there's just, that was like one of our favorite places, I think in, in Key West was Definitely. the Fort Zachary Taylor State Park. Very cool. History, beaches, nightlife, dog friendly. There's a little slice of everything for everybody. Cool. Good stuff. Transitioning a little bit and talking about food. What are some of your favorite breakfast, lunch spots, or just spots do you think you should definitely hit when you're in the Key West or the Keys area? Well, we are huge Key Lime fans. Yeah. So we actually found Forbes top 10 Key Lime pies. We only made it through five of them because um, some of them were just a little bit farther for us to drive and we didn't want to make the drive, but each one was very, very good. Um, I will say, honestly, though, one of our favorite key lime pies is at Publix. Oh, yeah. Really? The grocery store? The price yeah, the grocery store. <laughs> wow. But the one that we went to, where was it? The key lime pie bakery oh. in Key West. Yes. We feel, according to our taste buds, is the best. Right. And it said that it was the original key lime place from like 1865. But of all the ones we've tried... And that wasn't even on the top 10 list. Yeah, it's some of those lists, you wonder who put them together. And <laughs> But that one, we really enjoyed it. But you can't really get a bad piece of no. key lime pie anywhere in the Keys. Um, but surprise, if you are just in Florida, you're not in the Keys, and you like key lime pie, just go to Publix. It's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> Publix has a very good key lime pie. And then the other thing that's kind of neat, too, is that each place has their own take on key lime pie. Yeah. You know, some will do whipped cream, some do the meringue, some people drizzle it with raspberry, chocolate covered. Um, we actually found one we really liked um, that was a coconut key lime pie. That was probably mm -hmm. one of our favorites as well. So it's kind of neat. So if you're a key lime pie lover, just have at it. Well, from a restaurant <laughs> standpoint in Key Largo, we went to this restaurant called The Fish House for, for dinner. Mm -hmm. And it had a really nice you know, being a sea type vibe, you know, it felt like you're on a boat and uh, they had really good food as well there. And in Key West, being Airstreamers, <laughs> there's a restaurant called Garbo's in Key West that 
has the food is cooked in an airstream <laughs> and pass that it's up. all outside seating <laughs> and they have live music there and then there's like a separate bar that's in like a old cottage house that the drinks come out of there and the food comes out of the airstream and really awesome vibe and pretty reasonably priced for being oh, yeah. in Key West. And really good tacos. Too. Yeah. I got like the fish taco trio. I had the uh, the burgers. I always am a burger man. But uh, <laughs> those are two places that we can highly recommend. And it was nice because it was super dog friendly because they had this big sign that says, dogs preferred, humans tolerated. Yeah. <laughs> you always and know like, that's going to be good. You go in the bar and there was, I think, three golden retrievers laying on the ground in the bar by the bar area. And yeah, it was just yeah, super dog friendly. And then I know there's a whole list of restaurants that are dog friendly. Yeah. So and one we didn't eat at, but we've heard good things about was Sloppy Joe's. Sloppy Joe's bar is a landmark. A lot of celebrities are known to frequent that kind of chess and just played a surprise concert there. So that that's one that we could recommend. There's there's just a lot of options for mm -hmm. whatever your taste might be. Right. And we haven't had a bad bad meal in, in the Florida Keys. No. So Robbie's, even Robbie's. Robbie's oh, yeah. where you feed the tarpon. Yeah. And uh what was that? Uh Isla Morada. Mm -hmm. That's an Isla Morada, so it's like halfway down the keys. They have a good restaurant there. We had their key lime pie. Mm -hmm. Um outdoor seating right on waterfront. So that's that's another place we'd recommend. That place had a lot of neat stuff to check out other right. than just the restaurant. Again, you can feed the tarpon, the fish. How was it? Five bucks for a right, yeah, for very, a bucket of fish or yeah, something. Yeah, very reasonably priced. Yeah. So yeah, I don't feel like you can really go wrong because most of the food is you know fresh fish, you know key lime pie. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> well, you guys are definitely making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> And now we have our nice list to follow when we get to uh, the Keys. So if you haven't mentioned them already, are there any nearby attractions that you want to mention? Well, I, honestly, the other thing, too, I know not this is not everybody's cup of tea, but we went to the Key West Cemetery. That was very interesting and very educational. Like, in just the different kinds, like the graves are all above um, the ground because of the water level. And just reading about some of the different people, they had some really interesting gravestones. Like one was a big conch shell. One was like a, um, a bookshelf with books on it of all her favorite books. And I don't, I have, I've always really enjoyed going to a really old cemetery like that. I don't remember what the year, what the year is on it, but it's either somewhere in the 1800s, I believe. Well, Key West is Florida's first city. Right. Uh, a lot of people don't know that, but, um, Cool places to check out is Mallory Square. Uh, oh, yeah. You definitely yeah. want to be there for sunset. That's a bucket list thing. We, we just were able to do that this last trip. There are street performers that perform right there. There's usually a cruise ship in port. Again, it gives you that feeling that you are somewhere far away. Uh, another cool place that we didn't go to that we want to, we may get to pretty soon, is the Dry Tortugas National oh, Park. Yeah. You have to take a float plane out there or boat that's the only way to get there but that place is really awesome from what we've seen mm -hmm. uh hemingway house is there and so is the key west lighthouse there's a lot of different museums also in key west for you know whatever your interests are you know there's there's just tons to do in key like even just in key west there's yeah. just tons to do Awesome. So you really could spend probably a couple weeks there and have just a bunch of different experiences. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And actually, when I asked Alexis how long we needed to spend there, she's like, oh, at least three weeks. That was her, that was her answer. I'm convinced that you can spend as much time as you want in almost any place. <laughs> right. Because there's just, there is so much. It sounds like, and it sounds like you guys just planned our entire three-week trip down to the yeah. Key West. And we'll definitely be listening to this podcast when we're making our trip down there. Because, yeah, this was really, really informative. Yeah. Oh, actually, there's one more really cool thing that um, you can take the, you can actually walk or bike the old seven mile bridge right. to Pigeon Key, which you can only access Pigeon Key by the old bridge. Now, the interesting thing is dogs are allowed on the old bridge, but they are not allowed on Pigeon Key, except for one day a year. There's sometime in January, they do some sort of a dog fundraiser. So dogs are allowed on Pigeon Key Island. <laughs> but that looked like a really cool thing too. It's like, I think it's about two miles two miles of the old seven mile bridge, like the original one that the train tracks were on. Um, and just even the history of the overseas highway is really very interesting. I think Modern Marvels. Modern Marvels has a good uh, episode about the overseas highway that I would highly recommend anybody to check out if you're gonna be headed down there because it's nice to know how it all came about. Mm -hmm. 
And there is a hurricane museum there as well because there was a huge hurricane in the 1930s, killed a bunch of people and kind of impacted the overseas highway. And there's, I believe that museum is in, is it Marathon or Isla Morada? I'm not sure which one, but that's there to check out as well. So oh, the again, Divers Museum? The Divers Museum. I mean, there's just there's a lot. There's a lot to do. Yeah. The list goes on and on. Yeah, we could probably have a three-hour segment on what to do in, in uh, the Keys, the Florida Keys. Yeah. We'll transition into the three, two, one countdown segment of the podcast, the final three questions. So what are three things to do around the Florida Keys area? One thing we super duper recommend is the Robert Was Here Fruit Stand. You heard that right. Robert Was Here is the name. <laughs> it was called Robert Was Here Fruit Stand. I believe they've been operating for about 60 years. It's in Homestead, Florida. It's just outside the Everglades. So that's more if you're coming on the east side. And they have just the most amazing variety of tropical and exotic fruits. And not only that, they have the best milkshake we have Hands ever down. had. Hands, Hands down. down the best milkshake ever. Like I got, um, and it's all made with fresh, really fresh fruit. Um, I got the coconut lime vanilla milkshake. And Alexis is a huge fan of dragon fruit. So she literally just got dragon fruit and ice in her smoothie. Um, but the interesting thing too is that they have three turnovers as far as like different fruits so when we were down in october it was a whole different set of exotic fruit in january it was like a whole nother set of exotic fruit so it's kind of interesting we got to try these things called sanitel and pompey and like all these really interesting can you know just very interesting names and very interesting flavors and then when i asked they said also june is another turnover so the big times are like summer, winter, and fall. They have totally different fruits. And you can actually just buy the fruit or you can put it into a smoothie or a milkshake. But that is hands down a big recommendation. And when we go, because we're, out, we're towing our Airstream either down or back from the Keys, there's RV parking there as well. So don't feel like you can't go there if you're, if you're towing your rig. Right. And not only that, like we always just kind of stop, get our fruit, get our milkshakes and go. But they have tons of stuff around there. They oh, have like a little true. petting zoo. Yep. Um, they have different, um, like a, I saw a blacksmith little area. So they've got a lot of things. So it can be like a whole little stop if you want it to be. A couple other things though. I mean, you're right there at the Everglades National Park is literally right there. Mm -hmm. And so is Big Cypress, just a little bit further north. That's a really cool place. If you want to see alligators, there's tons of alligators all over the place. If you want to take an alligator, one of those uh, swamp boat tours. Oh yeah. You know, those are right there. Check those out. I highly recommend doing that. I've never done that before. It's a really great experience. So yeah, basically, if you're coming down from the east side, you know, instead of taking the main highway, what's the road? That, 41. So 41 goes through the big Cypress, big Cypress area. And at every single little turnoff that you can go on, they have like a little boardwalk. You can see alligators like all over the place. It's just, it's, it's really a, a cool kind of aspect of like getting down there. And like we've talked about wanting to spend the night there. We haven't yet, but it's definitely a there's multiple uh, upper, there's multiple campgrounds along oh, yeah. 41 between naples and uh homestead that you can you can spend time there if you'd like to and i highly would re i highly recommend that like say we want to do that just for airboat rides or if you want to hike check out alligators it's just, it's just a different vibe there oh yeah again it's, a, it's just that laid-back vibe even in the, at the national park there is super laid back and actually i talked to a lady at the visitor center I guess her and her husband don't sleep very well. They said they were out kayaking at two in the morning and they saw a cougar like just well, staring right Florida, at them. Florida Panther. Oh, I'm sorry. Florida Panther. <laughs> but yeah, they so have signs all over the place for Florida Panther <laughs> crossing. Even when you're in Naples, which is a, you know, a high end area, they have signs everywhere. Panther crossing and the lights are flashing, <laughs> you know, like you're going to see one at any second. <laughs> so we've, we've watched. We haven't seen any. But I bet if you drove at night, there's a slight chance you might see one cross the road. <laughs> That's cool. It's cool how informative this episode has been in terms of things you've done, but at the same time, you're talking about things you want to do. So you've been here so many times, you have so much experience here, but there's still a ton of things left to do. Oh, yeah. That's great. So, so in terms of three things around the park, I have the Everglades National Park, the Robert Was Here Fruit Stand, and then the Big Cypress Swamp. Well, actually, and I've got kind of one more, so we can kind of combine those two, but um, kayaking through the mangroves. Oh, yeah. Now, you can do this at John Penny Camp State Park. Um, I actually haven't gotten the opportunity to do it because the first time we were there, there was E. coli in the water, which kind of brings up another point that they're very good at monitoring the water to make sure it's safe for people to go in. They're constantly checking the you know bacteria levels. Um, but there's also a lot of other independent places where you can kayak the mangroves and even take your dog with you as well. And I think that to me, that's it's on my bucket list of, of 
kayaking the mangroves. Giant Penny Camp is another place that you that offers um, offshore snorkeling opportunities. We weren't able to do that because of weather both times that we were there, but right. they do have it and it's supposed to be really good. And they have the glass bottom boat tours, which is nice when you go through the state park, it's only like $30 a person. Whereas if you go, go to an independent you know, person, it's gonna cost a little bit more. So that's a pretty low cost activity to do. What are two complaints somebody might have, or not necessarily complaints, but things they wish they prepared for before visiting the Florida Keys? I think one of the, the biggest thing, preparations is, is a mental thing. Like sometimes you can research a place and all you see are the most beautiful things. You know, that was something that kind of happened with us at Glacier too, where all we saw were these, all these amazing views and like, it's not all amazing views. There are just woods, which are beautiful. But the same thing with the Florida Keys, like when you, you kind of expect that it's all going to be the seven mile bridge kind of look, where really driving from, you know, up until Marathon, it kind of just looks like Florida. It does. You know, there's just you don't really see the water that much once you get to the seven mile bridge to key west that section is you know that's that has that feel of the florida keys you see the water you go to these little islands but that was something that especially for jason he was kind of like whoa this is the florida keys like it was kind of like a little bit of a shock to him because he was expecting seven mile bridge and like all these water views the whole time where it really is from marathon to key west is where you get those views so that was one and i think the other one which I know we touched on a little bit was the cost is that, you know, if you can get into a state park and utilize a state park, it's great, but the campgrounds are super expensive. Hotels are super expensive. Flying, they're super expensive. So you, you can do it on a low cost budget, but it can also be a very expensive thing to do. Yeah. Those are great tips. It's planning ahead and then managing expectations in terms of getting into the Florida Keys. Yeah. Now we talked about a lot today and I mean a lot, but, if you were to leave the Florida Keys, what is the one thing you cannot leave the Florida Keys without doing? And we had, we kind of had different answers on this, but I also agree with his answer. But for me, you have to snorkel because part of like the Florida Keys is getting in the water. That's part of the cool thing about the Florida Keys is that it has all the coral reefs that are surrounding, you know, all of the Florida Keys. I know he had something that I also agree with, but. You can't go without going to Key West. And, you know, visit the southernmost point, um, get to your picture by that. And it's a large, like a buoy that's on land, if you're not familiar with it. There's always a line to take a yeah. picture. <laughs> so be so prepared. Do that, cross that off your bucket list, go to Mallory Square for the sunset. And uh, I think that'll complete the trip. Perfect. Now, any, you start talking about snorkeling, any favorite snorkel spots in the Florida Keys? Well, I found. I know, I actually never got to do a boat tour because it just never worked out in our schedule. So I hear that those really are the best if you can go to a boat tour. But if you are just snorkeling um, by yourself and you're just going to a beach, Fort Zachary Taylor State Park, they have four different little sections of rocks. And when you when you swim near those rocks, we saw so many different fish. We saw jellyfish, we saw, Alexa saw an octopus even at the one little section. But to me, that place was like, just magical. Like you really, like I said, you felt like you were swimming in an aquarium. It was absolutely beautiful. And that was one place you can go that you don't have to take a snorkel boat tour to. Now, do you guys bring your own snorkel gear or do you know if there's a place you can rent them if you're just flying in for the weekend? So John Penny Camp State Park and Bahia Honda offer all rentals and you can purchase things there as well. And there's also tons of other dive shops in the area as well. Yeah, I would say like every, every little section of shops you'll have, you know, scuba and snorkeling gear key lime pie and you know it's kind of like you kind of see the same things like over and over so yeah there's tons of places to buy things or yeah the state parks rent them and i'm sure even other places rent them as well perfect yeah. awesome wow yeah this was a ton of information here everything from you know, cruise ship locations snorkeling spots restaurants dog places um yeah thank you guys a ton for coming on and and sharing your experience That's and your cool. advice on planning a trip to the florida keys we definitely have a full itinerary for sure. Yeah. Good. Good. We'll be looking forward to seeing yeah, that video. That's right. Awesome. Jason and Laura, thanks again for coming on the show. And once again, if you haven't heard the first episode, episode 13 of the Travel Path podcast, they talked about their 75 day road trip across the country, how they did that with their daughter, Alexis, and all the cool things they saw out there. So give that a listen. And uh, one more time, Jason, and Laura, where can my audience find out more about you guys? So we are on YouTube as Adventures of Mom, Dad, Girl, and a Little White Dog. We're also on Facebook with that same name. And then on Instagram um, as Aridessa Airstream. 
but I will admit that I'm not a big social media person. So you can find me best on YouTube. I try to, I try to answer my comments as much as I can. <laughs> Perfect. All right. We will link those channels below. Jason and Laura, thanks again. Thank yes, you. Thank you.